I went. <laughs> no, 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 no. I went. I went to the rodeo last. Was it last, last March? The first. I'd never to a rodeo before. No one warned me. But I saw. I saw the mutton busting thing. I Bustin. 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 My mouth was agape for like 30 minutes. I'm going, oh my god. Why are child services not here? <laughs> they, these, do these kids, do they not get injured? I mean, is this not dangerous? I saw one where the sheep was going so fast that the sheep tumbled over the kid. Oh, man, just <laughs> <laughs> I, I never felt like more of a New Yorker in Texas and went to the rodeo because that was, oh my god, there was just so much. All the exhibits and the people getting almost gored and I, I had, it, it was, I, I, I had never seen anything like that in my life. And the Star Spangled Banner at the beginning, have you seen that? Where there's a lady in a dress riding a, a horse bareback with an American flag that shoots fireworks. Yeah. No, no, nothing. <laughs> anyway, well, okay, so your kid did really well. How old is he? What's the age range for, for this mutton bussin? So, so he's, he's like that peak, like, you know, not too small but not too heavy. <laughs> And and the belt buckle is a prize, right? Now, what are his odds of making it to uh, the Houston rodeo? Okay. All right. So we'll root for him. This is a big deal. Okay. All right. So you'll tell us on Tuesday if you how do you do? Okay. Good. All right, and, and I'm warning you now. Okay, it's not warning, but my, my parents are actually on their way. They landed, and they're probably going to come in at some point, like the last ten minutes of class. I'm just warning you. I'm going to take my. They're from New York, right? They. I'm going to take them to the rodeo this March. I want to, and they're going to just be stunned. Like I, I remember the first time I took my parents shooting. <laughs> my dad's like, "Why is this so loud?" <laughs> So, <laughs> they're New Yorkers. I, I'm 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 a quasi New Yorker. I've lost most of my mannerisms. I don't know any cultural things from New York, but they're New Yorkers. I tried to explain the button busting to my mom, and she was just she didn't understand. So maybe. <laughs> How's what judged? You've never seen it. I've seen it. I, you they time it. However many seconds you go, and I saw one of them last year at the rodeo. The winner. The sheep went straight into the wall and crashed with the kid on it. But he won. Damn straight he won. And he got a belt buckle that was like the size of his head. It's like this big. Wait, so you're going to go I'm going to go in March. Yeah, I went last year for a couple for two nights, but I want to go again and not be stunned. Like no one prepared me. What what what's what's in Liberty? <laughs> When is it? This weekend? I'm actually with my parents to Austin on Saturday. They've never been. Oh, That's really fun. So, oh, so other than the capital and the grounds, anything else I must do? We're there for basically a day, not much more. Six Street, yeah, I'm going to go take for dinner near there. Anything else? Lake Travis? The Alamo? All right. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, all right. Got my child recommendation. All right? Back case. Okay, got it. All right, anything else? Yes. What? In what part? Zilker Park. Okay, I'll, I'll look into that. Okay. All right, cool. Any actual property questions to talk about today? All right, so, so congratulations. We've done future interests. You'll still need to know from the exam, though, I promise. But we're done with it now. Uh, we're moving on to a new topic. This is actually a fairly short topic. It could probably be done in one day, but I split it to two to have a little bit more. The discussion time is co-ownership. Um, so we always talk about, you know, one person owning a piece of property at one time, you know, to A for life, then to B, right? 
or to A for so long as it's a school, then to C, right? That's what we talked about. But here we're talking about something different. Concurrent interests, that is, two people owning the same piece of property at the same time. So I want to kind of dispel you a few notions. This is not the same thing as having a roommate, right? This is not the same thing as having a roommate. When I say co-ownership, I mean it literally. Both of them own it as if they were together. Okay? This was really necessary as a historical legacy, mostly for married couples, for a very obvious reason. Women couldn't own property. They couldn't. So what happens when you had a single woman, right? She could own property. The second she got married, where would that property go? Well, it would obviously go to the husband. But in order to make things seem like it was still belonging to the woman, they made this thing called the joint tenancy by the entirety. Was they could own it together. You might ask, why couldn't they just give it to the woman, right? I'm sorry, why couldn't they just give it to the husband for the husband to keep? Well, there's a problem with that. What happens if the husband dies? Where does the property go? It would have to revert back to the wife. So much of property law actually stems from this fiction of how do we make sure that a woman who owned property before marriage can still own it after the marriage, for example, if the husband dies. Or say the woman was very wealthy and held this you know, wealth, the husband didn't, they wanted to make sure that if something happened to the husband, it was actually divorce granted, which were fairly rare, but, but, but possible, it would go back to the uh, wife's family. So we talk about these uh, concurrent interests for, uh, to discuss joint property, but historically it all uh, came from feudalism and trying to make sure that people could live together uh, in marriage. So there are three main estates we're going to talk about. Okay, there's tenants in common. There's joint tenants in common. And there's tenancy by the entirety. And I use that evil word, which I hope you even know. I said estates. But, but these are no different than life estates, right? These are not much different than fee simple determinables. These aren't different than fee simple subject condition subsequence. These are more estates to think about, but they're a lot easier. There are not nearly as many rules. So in the past, I said, what's an estate, right? There are two questions. Who owns it and when, right? These define the same two questions. In the past, whenever I said who owns something, it was always, oh, A, right? Okay. Now it's not just A, it's A and B, or husband and wife, or A, B, C, and D. You can have a number of uh, uh, people owning together at the same time. And even though we answer the first question, who owns it, we still have to answer the second question. You can have a tenancy in common and fee simple. You can have a joint tenants for life. And if you want to get really messy, you can probably do a joint tenancy. I'm sorry, you can probably do a tenancy in common with some condition attached to it. I won't bother you with that. But you need to answer the same two questions. Who owns it? Okay, A, B, C, name them. And when? Do they own it? Okay, is it a life estate or whatever? It gets a little messier when you do life estates because now I have to measure two lives, not one, but we'll get to that in a moment. Okay. Uh, ju just so you know, the number two, if you want to make it easier yourself, you can just call it a joint tenant. Uh, it's sometimes called joint tenants or joint tenants in common. It's referred to both ways. If you put in common, you might get confused with tenants in common. So if you just call it a joint tenant or joint tenancy, I'll, I'll know what you're talking about. Uh, but that's probably the. Uh, uh, but but I, I've seen I've seen them called both ways. So just just for your own um, notes. Okay. So uh, ooh, I don't know where the heck, where did I finish? Last time? And I, I always skip you, and, and I, I'm sorry about that. I don't I don't need to. I always go from him to him, and um, it's not it's not intentional. So I'll start with you today. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it, it's totally an inverted. I realize it because I always, I logically go there, but then I go back. So the side rows are trickier. All right, here we go. All right, so Clive, tell me what, what, what is a tenancy in common or tenants in common? Yeah. Okay, let, let's be more precise. Does it have to be two? Yeah. Okay. So it's some sort of co-ownership among people, right? What is the most important characteristic of the tenancy in common? What, what's 
what's the most important element of it that distinguishes it from these other other two items? Is it when uh, No, no, it's actually the other one. All right. Well, let me let me ask this. Okay. All right, Clay. So if there's a tendency in common, right, with two people on there. How would you define each of their shares? The black, uh, A and B are tenants in common on Blackacre. How would you then go and define A and B's shares? Okay, that's the wrong answer. I'm glad you said it. Okay. No, but that, that, that's a good wrong answer. It's not 50-50, and I don't want you to think about it like that. They each have their own complete undivided interest. If you want to be precise, it's actually called a separate but undivided interest. It's not 50-50. Don't think of it as 50-50 because you're going to get yourself confused. The tenants in common, each of them, both A and B, have a separate but undivided interest. They each effectively have 100%, right? But we can't say that because if two people have 100%, that's 200%. That doesn't make any sense. So we, instead, we say they have a separate but undivided interest. All right. So all right. So now, so so Christopher, under a tenancy in common, where can each of the A and B go on the land? Are there any restrictions on where they can go? Yeah. If, if they, can they walk? Can they go anywhere in Blackacre if they want? Can they do anything on black if they want? And you know what my follow up question is going to be? Okay, so now uh, my follow up question is what happens if A is doing something on black if that B doesn't like? Okay, so that's where it gets tricky. So if those of you who have roommates doing some dumb thing that you don't want them to do, <laughs> It's actually not that much different, but here they're actually legal mechanisms because each has their own uh, separate but undivided interest. So we'll actually do in the next class what happens when, uh, I think the case is, these two people own a warehouse jointly, and one person's like dumping all this trash in the way they want them to. We'll, we'll do that case in the next class. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. Ashley, if you have two people with a joint tenants in common, A and B, and say A is sick and tired of B. He wants to get rid of it. Can A sell a share to someone else? Under under a tenancy in common, can A sell his share? Yes. Right? So, okay, so say A and B are living there, right? A sells his share to C. What's then the relation between A and C? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll write it out. I know it's hard to keep these things right. So, right. so we have A and B. So I say it like this. So to, to A and B as joint tenants in common, right? That, that's the grant. And then B, I'm sorry, A sells his share. C, right? So under these facts, what would we call the relationship between A and C now? Not just neighbors. I'm, I'm so yeah. So the relationship between between um, B and C. Yeah, I'm sorry. They're they're they're. I'm sorry. You're right. Thank you. There are tenants in common. Yeah, B and C relationship. How would you describe the relationship? Yes, there are also tenants in common. So when you have two people with tenants in common and one sells their share. Right? It's still going to be a tenancy in common to the new neighbor. It doesn't dissolve the relationship. Okay? When A and B are given the land together as joint tenants in common, and A sells a share, then B and C are then tenants in common. Yes? Hmm? 
Ah, that's where the separate comes from. You're not exactly selling a 50% share. You're selling your separate but undivided share. The words separate and undivided are totally contradictory, <laughs> in case that wasn't obvious. You can't have a separate undivided share. It's just a fiction, right? You have two people who effectively each have 100% interest in a piece of land. You can't have two 100% interests because that's 200%. So we say that you have the right to everything, but you can sell your part of it. In the same way, say there were three tenants in common, right? They would each have a separate and undivided share. Not quite a third, but they each have their own share, and they can then sell that. The fact is, there always need to be two tenants in common. <coughs> Doesn't matter if it's A and B or B and C. And so A selling his share, does that mean A just has no nothing? Yeah, A sold the share, he's got nothing. Yes, sir. So how would the tenant in common be in the thing that they can just sell whatever they have? Okay, so let's say that you're you're B, you're B here, right? And you want to end this tenancy in common. What do you do? How would you make your bundle of sticks complete? If you're B. Yes. Yes, that's exactly right. So what happens if then B, I'm sorry, C sells uh, his share to B? Alex, what would B have? Too simple. You, you sever the joint tenancy by bringing all the sticks into one bundle, right? Because if B holds two separate but undivided interest, he has the entire thing. He now owns the entire land. And we do that in the, uh, in the, in the, the riddle case, but how to get rid of a joint tenancy in common, you have to effectively transfer it out. Yes, sir? Uh, what if uh, A doesn't have any heirs? Would it just go back to the state? Or okay, well, let's, let's do survivorship next, okay? We're going to do survivorship in a minute. Everyone okay with this much? Okay. So now let's let's do the same example again. So I say to to A and B as tenants in common. Okay. All right, so Lillian, to A and B as tenants in common, right? Okay. A dies. It's a bucket. What's the state of this uh, property after A dies? What happens? Is there a right of survivorship for the tenant in common? That's right. There's no survivorship for tenants in, for tenants in common. Okay? So because this law doesn't control what happens, what happens to A's share? What always happens to someone's share when they die? Well, no, 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 let me give an example from last week, you know, to A and his heirs, right? What happens when A dies? Yeah. So what happens here? What happens to anyone when the property ends? Or when, when, in general, when a person dies, what happens to their property? Yeah, what are those people called? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. You you were there, you're dancing around. Yeah, yeah. It goes to it goes to the the the, uh, the interest goes to A's heirs. That that that's straightforward, right? When A dies, it goes to his heirs. There's no right of survivorship for the tenancy in common. It goes to A's heirs. Okay, so now uh, Natalia, describe the joint tenancy. There there were two shares before. So, 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 who are the joint tenants now? I'm sorry. No, no. As tenant, the tenants in common. Who are the two tenants? I keep saying it wrong. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, so, so the tenants in common are A's heirs, whoever those happen to be. Yeah. And that, and that's actually kind of annoying. Didn't you tell me you had a thing about this? You want to mention it? 
because it was left to, to the, the, the kidney to the most. What was that you told me before? Yeah. Yeah. So that's unfortunately when you have a joint tenancy in common, if a person dies and tests it, right, with no will, then it just goes to all the heirs. If a person has a will, they can say, well, I want my interest in Blackacre to go to my daughter. Name her. But if the person dies and tests it, it's all the heirs. How are they stealing it? B still has his... <laughs> They, yeah, and that's going to get really messy if you have 27 family members trying to split over an interest. Yeah, so I mean, in, in practice, it, it will be really annoying for B because now instead of having one neighbor, he has 27 neighbors. Taking a tenancy in common is risky, right? Because you never know who's going to uh, come into your land after your, your neighbor dies. Right? If you don't like it, you can leave. But again, this is this old feudalistic device meant to keep people on land and keep families attached to land. Everyone see that? Yes, ma'am. Sure. So the best way to explain the survivorship is if I talk about the joint tenants in common. Can I do that? Okay. Question's not on that. Okay. I have this weird thing where I never say the. I always mix it up in my head. Like I have the right word, but I never say it right. So if you if you see I'm saying the wrong word, just stop me. Um, I usually catch myself, but not always. Um, okay, let's do the next one. Joint. It's okay. Like I'm preparing for class. I say it over and over. Like joint tenants in common. Say it right. Uh, joint tenants in common. The biggest difference between a tenancy in common and the joint tenancy in common is that the joint tenancy has what's called a right of survivorship. What does that mean? Okay. So I'm going to use the example I gave before, but I'm going to tweak a little bit. So to A and B as tenants in common, right? That's how Black Blackacres convey it. To A and B as tenants in common. Okay, so uh, Alex, what happens now? Damn, I did it again. Joint tenants in common. Joint tenants. Yeah, I. I don't know why. I usually go with terminology. For, this one always trips me up. I, I apologize in that. Alex. Either, which is why it always gets confused. So let's, we'll just say joint tenants to make it easier. So Alex, the A and B is joint tenants, right? Don't worry about the four you news yet. Let's talk about survivorship. A dies. What happens? B has B gets fee simple. So um, actually, the most distinctive aspect of the joint tenancy in common is its right survivorship. If there's A and B as joint tenants, A dies, B gets in fee simple. In contrast, with a, with a tenancy in common, there's no survivorship. When A dies, it goes to A's heirs, and B has no control over it. So that's the biggest difference with a joint tenancy. There's a right of survivorship. When one person dies, the other person gets a simple. But that only works if there's two people. What happens if there's three people and only one dies? What do you think, uh, what do you think Mike? If there are three, so let's do it like this. To A, B, and C, oops. And C as joint tenants. A dies. What 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 happens after that? Oh, he's buried. Yeah. <laughs> so then, what what how will we describe B and C's interests? Hmm. No. You, you're going too hard. Yes. They're now joint tenants. They're still joint tenants, the two of them. 
but you're on the right track to what you were thinking about. And I want to do that next. So we all say, wow, yeah, joint tenants, that's cool, right? Because it's the right of survivorship. But in property law, whenever something's like actually good, it's more complicated to get. It, it's always a rule. Whenever something gives people more benefits, it's tougher to get because you want to make it harder to get rid of. Okay? So over the years, this idea of a joint tenancy was really premised mostly on husbands and wives, and we'll do the tenancy by the entirety in a minute, but it was premised on people wanting to be together for a long time. And they wanted to make sure that your neighbor, your joint tenant, couldn't screw you out of the land. Because, like Alex said with the example above, A can then convey his interest to someone else and bring in some neighbor that they might not like. Right? That was not a good idea. Or, if A dies, A's heir could be a jerk, and B not, might not want to live with him. So they want to make sure that this right of survivorship was controlled. So they invented these, these four unities, um, uh, the, these four things that must be present at the same time. And, and the idea of a unity is kind of this um, thing which you don't think about much today, but if you go back to the olden days and you have liver of size in this, this ritual done in the woods with the twiggling, a lot of things have to happen before you can twiggle, right? You have to have all the paperwork done. You have to have all the ownership there. You have to have the possession of the land. There are all these things which make sense when you're dumping a clump of dirt in someone's hand, which don't really make much sense today. Alas, we still have these arcane uh, 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 rituals because of the um, uh, because of this history. Okay. So in order to show that these people are in fact joint tenants, they have this equality and show these four unities. And the 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 initial or the acronym that thousands of law students have used over the years to memorize it is TTIP. Uh, burn that in your mind, you'll probably never forget it. It's actually a fairly easy acronym. So if you do Barbary, they have these acronyms that are like eight or nine layers long. They're actually pretty good. There's this one from SIF about armadillos eating something, and I can't remember, but it's very memorable. But TTIP. <laughs> <laughs> I remember saying about the armadillos. I don't remember what it stands for, but it's about armadillos. So TTIP, right? So we got these four unities. Number one's time. Number two is title. Number three is interest. And number four is possession. What you have to keep in mind is that in order for something to be a joint tenant, all four of these must be present. If any one of them is lacking, either at the time of the conveyance or even later on down the road, then it automatically converts to a tenancy in common. Automatically. It, that's brutal. Because you might think, oh, great, you know, uh, I have this joint uh, tenancy with my wife, and I can't wait till she dies so I can get her property. Whoops. That's the case you read, right? Whoops. The wife did something weird to break up the four unities. Wife dies. You get no survivorship rights. All of this is premised on maintaining the survivorship rights. Um, there's some slightly other ancillary issues involving creditors. Uh, um, for example, uh, uh, during joint tenancies, creditors can reach uh, 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 both. Um, it also makes a difference for probate, right? Because if you have a husband and wife living as tenants in common, when one dies, it's very possible that the spouse might be the heir, but it's also go through probate, right? So it's an A and B as tenants in common. They're husband and wife. Usually, the wife is an heir, or the husband's an heir. But it's to go through probate. What's easy about this is automatic. The second the husband dies, the wife gets everything. It's pretty simple. So it has those benefits. But almost the, the, the entire thing is about the survivorship rights. So I, I promise you in the exam there will be a question where, where people are living together and one of them dies and you have to figure out who owns it. I, I, I don't have, but I promise you that will be a question in, in, in some form or another. All right, so let's go through each of these four um, unities. Okay, so... Uh, ba -ba -ba. Uh, uh, Christian, walk me through. What, what does what does time? What what has to happen to have a unity of time? Um, the right, exactly. So the interest must be acquired or vested at the same time. Okay. What does this mean? Okay. Say for example, I give you know 
I, I give Melissa uh, a share of Blackacre today, and then the next day I give, a, give George another share of Blackacre, and I say, okay, now you're joint tenants. Christian, would that work? Why? Yeah, right? The twiggling, right, happens on the first Sunday of, of, of July, right? It has to be done at the same time. You can't split up the acts. And, and, and there's actually a very practical reason for this. Imagine try splitting up, right? I say, okay, Melissa, I'm going to give you half today and give you, know, you half tomorrow. And then tomorrow I say, never mind. And then she has to be simple, right? Even though they both already made this arrangement with me. It's a way to keep everyone honest. You do all the transactions at the same time. Everyone knows who their neighbor is going to be, who their joint tenant is going to be. Keeps everyone on the same page. Okay? So the second one is title. Okay? Uh, let's see, Gloria, tell me about title. What, what, does, what does it mean to have a unity of title? Um, right, okay. So we don't do clumps of dirt anymore, uh, but we do paper. And this is, again, kind of an arcane thing, but the instrument that conveys the interest must be the same instrument. I can't give, you know, one deed to Melissa and another deed to George. Say, okay, you're both now joint tenants. It doesn't work like that. That's for the same piece of paper. And again, this makes sense. Because I might give her one piece of paper and say, oh, yeah, I'll give you another deed later, right? I never do. The entire purpose of this is to, put, to make sure that both of the joint tenants are united, literally united in their, in their acquisition of this, of this property. Okay? Uh, let's see. That. Okay, so Matt, walk me through the... Uh, the interest uh, element. Yeah, they this equal undivided share. Okay? And, and again, I don't want you to think 50-50. It's not, it's not necessarily like that. With a joint tenancy in common, each of them has to have access to the entirety of the property. We'll do a case, I think, on, uh, on the next class where uh, one person tries to build some sort of a, a, a fence or no, it was a, a boxing ring, whatever it is, <laughs> and tries to keep out the other one. Can't do that. Okay. All right, and, and finish this up, uh, David. What's, what's the requirement involving possession? Uh, you must have right possession of the whole. Okay. Uh, Three and four are very similar, in case you couldn't tell. Uh, the difference between them is very subtle, um, if not at all. I, I think the biggest difference is three um, refers to like the instrument as it's drafted, right? Four is what actually happens. Like when they actually move onto the land living together, is there any action taken to block someone off? Because you might imagine that the interest that the instrument says each has a complete undivided share. All right, great, wonderful. They move on to the land and then they build a fence. So that would actually violate the fourth unity, not the third. These four have to be present continuously. If any of those drops out, for example, let's see, the time one can't really be dropped out because, well, it actually kind of can. So imagine that you have two joint tenants, uh, uh, Catherine. You have two joint tenants, right? And one of them sells a share to someone else. What does that do to these four unities? That's right. Well, if, if one of the joint tenants sells his interest, which unity does this violate? And, yeah. Usually one and two are violated at the same time. Uh, it's hard not to. If you violate one, you're probably going to violate two. So if one of the joint tenants sells off his interest to someone else, we can no longer say that they're titled to invest at the same time. We can no longer say that they acquired title by the same instrument. That conveyance will be valid, but it converts, or we can even say downgrades, the estate from a joint tenancy to a tenancy in common. Right? Jared, what, what's, the, what's the effect of having all these four requirements? What, what does this usually... Uh, uh, what does it actually end up doing to the land? Okay. What is the effect of having these four requirements on a piece of land? How does it make it? How does it make man 
Excuse me. How do they make managing this land? Tough or easy, or how's it go? Um, well, I don't really know the So if you go into a joint tenancy with a spouse, right, and you're in there because you think that when you die, your spouse will get it, or when your spouse dies, you'll get it, right? What happens if your spouse has different ideas? Well, um, she's not allowed to. Uh, oh, she's allowed to, though. Can she sell her share? Can she screw you over? She can if she utilizes the uh, straw man Okay. So the difficulty is in order for you to deal with a joint tenancy, you have to be willing to effectively screw over your joint tenant. Right? That's what you're doing. You went into that arrangement with the understanding that if A dies, B gets it. B died, A gets. That was your that was your baseline. This is different. <laughs> if you have this this old wife on her deathbed wants to wants to shaft her husband, right? She can. She can, and she could write him out, transfer it to a straw man, whatever, and get rid of it. Okay. Let's say, um, actually, John uh, Travis alluded to it, but let's say you have two people join tenants. And they, uh, they, they, oh, they said right for John, right? Yeah. yeah. So let's say it's a slightly situation. Say we have two people who are joint tenants, and they actually want to substitute another person. So say we, I'll, I'll type it out. Say we have uh, to A and B as joint tenants, right? And let's say that they both want C to become a joint tenant. They want, they want to, uh, you know, add a third, right? How would how would they or how how could they possibly arrange that without destroying these four unities? Yes. And with what requirements? Yes, exactly. So here's how it would have to do. Does everyone understand what a straw is? I don't know if the book even bothered explaining that. But, but a straw man is a party who is being involved in a transaction for, for really no purpose other than just to clean it out. Uh, you often hear this involving gun sales, right, where they might sell a gun to a fake third person who sells it right back to them. Uh, so what they would have to do is they have to sell. So A and B will jointly sell to D, right? Oops, sorry. And then D will, 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 will write a grant that says, uh, I'll do it like this. So from D to A, B, and C as joint tenants. Okay? So, Christina, in this case, are all four unities present? If this, if this was a grant right now. Yeah? Yeah? So run, run through them. What, what are the four? Okay, so are the, was this done at the same time? Okay, what's the second one? Okay, is it is it is there a title there? Okay, what's the third one? Are they as written joint tenants with, you know, equal and divided shares? Okay, in possession? Yeah. So this is how the transaction would have to be done. Yes, ma'am. They're severed and recreated. Yes. They're severed and recreated. What, what I meant was they wanted to keep the unities for this new joint tenancy. It, it, so so that, that's why it's called a straw. So it's usually done the same day. They sever the unions just to recreate them. And that's to make sure that, that, that the straw man is a trustworthy person. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, in, in theory, right? They just sold to D. D. D can go to the bank and say, okay, <laughs> nice knowing you, right? I mean, they're probably contractual breaches, but under property law, they'd be screwed. Uh, everyone, everyone see that. So 
for a long time, in order to keep these unities, you really would need this straw man to kind of come in and, uh, um, what do you call it, range these transactions. Okay. All right, so now let's, let's ask this question, um, Chris, uh, Kristen. What happens if, uh, after this transaction, A, B, and C start hating each other? They hate each other's guts, right? They're like, you know what? I don't even see you anymore. What, what are their possible remedies at this point? They can do a couple things. What, what, what are a few other options? I'm sorry? Yeah, but what's the effect of, of A, B, or C selling one of their interests? What, what would that result in happening, the joint tenancy? It would what? And what would it become? That's right. Okay. So what are their other options short of devolving it, dissolving it into tenancy in common? What are the other options that they can, they can do? It would have the same effect in, 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 in theory. Not murder. <laughs> Plain places to bury. Yeah? No, no, that, that's what she said. She said they could sell it, which would destroy one of the four unities. What else can be done? It was mentioned in the book somewhere. Partition, right? They can actually go to a court and ask the court, saying, hey, court, listen, we, we freaking hate each other's guts. This land is roughly 300 acres. Give each of us 100 acres, let's be done with it. Or, in the event that the land can't be chopped up in an equal manner, not all land can be easily chopped up. Not just like an apartment or something, right? If you own an apartment, joint tenants in common, you can't partition it. So what would the court do in that case if these people hated each other? Not murder. Right. Sell it and split the proceeds in thirds. And partition wouldn't be destroying one of the four units? Oh, it would. At that point, it would no longer be a joint tenancy. I don't know. Yeah, so each would have a, a separate, distinct interest in all that. Right? All right, everyone okay with this so far? You're nodding your head? You good? Okay. Okay, so the... What, what was... Yes, no? Maybe so? Okay. So the book talks about these presumptions, which are probably more confusing than they're worth. But generally, in the modern era, courts don't want to presume that, tenants, that, that we have joint tenancy. Courts are more likely to presume that something vague is a tenancy in common. Uh, on the exam, I will give you something clear. It won't be vague. Okay? I can't speak for the bar, but if I say... To A and B as tenants in common, that means you're tenants in common. If I say to A and B as joint tenants, it means you're joint tenants. I promise I'll get it right for the exam. But um, <laughs> I probably hope. No, I think I will. Uh, so don't worry too much about the presumptions, at least for this class. Okay. There's a third one called the tenancy by the entirety. Um, and this is only in existence in a Handful of states. I think Texas has a modified form of it, but, but not exactly. It's kind of weird. But it's actually not, not that tough. The biggest difference is as the four unities plus one, which is marriage, right? So what's the uh, main way? Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, oh, oh, the microphone's hidden. So Cameron, what's the main way that a joint... Tenancy ends. What's what's usually the main way? No, no joint tenancy. So you, 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 you answer my next question. So, what's the main way a joint tenancy ends? No, no, the most common way. Death, right? Okay. So, and then you answer my question. What's the most common way that the tenancy by the entirety ends? Okay. Is divorce or death? Either divorce. Or death will dissolve the joint te the, the uh, tenancy by the entirety. Okay. So the next question, which I know you're going to ask, is what happens 
when one of the spouses dies. Okay? So, Sarah, what happens when, okay, so say we have to, a, to husband and wife as tenancy, as tenants by the entirety, right? Okay, the husband dies. What happens? The wife, right? Yeah, so the wife gets in fee simple. Okay. So now let's try this one. The husband and wife as tenants by the entirety, and they get divorced. Okay. So, uh, Simeon, what happens in this case? Oh, I think you got to say it right. That was correct. Say it again. Right. It becomes a tenancy in common. I know what you want to think. Oh, if only the fifth unity is God, it becomes a joint tenants. No, no, no. It, it shoots the ladders, right? It goes all the way to the bottom. It becomes a tenancy in common. It does not become a joint tenancy. Okay? It goes straight down to the bottom. And in that case, husband, or I guess ex-husband and ex-wife, they can sell their property. We'll talk about this a lot more. To the hand, or are you stretching? Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about this a lot more. We talk about marital property. Um, and also the interesting issue is we, I can actually talk about this here is actually same-sex marriage has some implications for this uh, because what's interesting is in a lot of states the tenancy by the entirety was abolished in order to get, allow women to have their own property rights. It was kind of a weird thing where as long as the tenancy by the entirety existed, husbands could continue to keep property in that manner. So the wife would never actually have their own interest. But by abolishing this, it actually made it more likely that a wife could have her own property. We'll talk about that later for marital property. But um, this one's fairly rare. I think only half the states have it, and Texas mentions it in the statute, but I'm not sure how prevalent how, how it is. Okay. Questions? Anything? Yes, sir. So, you said before it was to prevent the problems. I'm sorry. You said that making the unity requirement doesn't have to the it makes the stakes higher for, for breaking up the tenancy, right? Because now, if either husband or wife or you know two joint tenants sell to someone else, they now have to suffer the consequences of breaking up the uh, tenancy and getting rid of survivorship rights. And there are certain personal pressures that come with that. Look, if you and if you and I are joint tenants, right? You you and I are joint tenants, and I say, "Hey, Alex, I'm going to sell my share." You say, "Whoa! If you sell your share, I'm going to lose out of my survivorship." You might try and buy it from me. You might try and stop me. It's meant to try and make the people work together to keep the property on, in, within the within the uh, partnership. Does that make sense? Is that a hand or just a coke? Okay. All right. Let's do some questions on page three twenty two, please. Uh, all right, now let's uh, call on you for, for question number one. Yeah. Right, can you read it, please? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. So let's, let's walk through this. So we have O conveys black acre to A, B, and C as joint tenants. Okay? Then o, A conveys uh, the interest to D. Okay? So let's just stop at that sentence. At the moment that A conveys his interest to D, what happens? Right. So let's go one step back. At this point, what's the interest? Right, right after this first sentence. Okay, so A, B, and C are joint tenants. And we know this because of the four unities, right? It was done at the same time, the same uh, uh, title, they have uh, the interest, and they have complete possession. Those are all present. Okay. But then, A conveys interest to D, and you're correct. This has the effect of severing 
the joint tendency. Okay. But now what gets interesting is oh here, let me bring this up one page. So actually after after A convinces Z, it severs the joint tendency, but let's be very precise. Describe for me the relationship between B and C. Mm. No, no, no. Let's let's walk this through though. How many how many joint tenants were in the beginning? Yeah, there were three. We know that A was a joint tenant with B, and A was a joint tenant with C. We also know that B and C were joint tenants with each other, right? When A conveyed his interest, which of those relationships did he sever? No. See, and this is what's interesting. So let, 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 me, let me break this down, right? So when I say A, B, and C are joint tenants, let's list relationships. There's A, B, right? There's A, C, and then there's B, C. These are, these are the three relationships, right? Yes. This is gone, and this is gone. What about this one? It remains. It remains. So actually what happens here, I'll walk through this again. You know, it's tricky. I know, only 10 pages of reading, so it's simple, right? Never. <laughs> if it's ever a short reading, you know it's going to be hard. That, that, that's rule of thumb. So what happens here is that we have the new parties, right? So who's living there? B, C, and D. These are the new people. B and C are still joint tenants between each other. But B and D and C and D are tenants in common. I'm going to walk through this again, I promise. When we say that A, B, and C are joint tenants, we're actually speaking of several relationships. It's relations between A and B, or B and A, you can say it either way, but it's the same relationship. The relation between A and C, the relationship between B and C. Why would it be fair if we let A mess up B and C's relationship? Right? If you have three people living in the land, maybe B and C are married, right? And they, they, they're together. And they want to be together. And they want their own survivors between the two of them. Why would we let A's callous, craven act break that apart? We wouldn't. A's act of selling it only severs his relationship between B and his relationship between C. B and C still have their in joint tenancy, their complete, uh, uh, their un undivided shares. Yes, sir. But if B or C dies, the other doesn't get the uh, B. Okay, that that was actually my next question. I, 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 was, I wasn't getting there yet, but let, let's 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 say that B dies and tested, right? What happened? What happens to what happens to B's interest when B dies? Describe B's relationship with C. So what happens when one joint tenant dies? Who's they? When B and C are joint tenants, right? Forget forget A. Let's just give it a normal joint tenancy. B and C are joint tenants, right? B dies. What happens? Okay, so what happens here? I know, I know. You don't want to just say it. Say it. You're, you're, you're actually right. But which part of it? Look, look right here. When B and C are joint tenants, right? This is why it's weird. They have a fee simple for their share of the land. That's all of it. Yes. So when. B dies, what happens to that interest? It, it exists, it's an interest. So, and where does it go? To, uh, I don't know. Oh, no, it goes to C. Yes! Yeah. It goes to C. Think about this. No, no, one, one second. Let me explain this again. B, B, B's dead. B and C were joint tenants, right? B and C were joint tenants. Joint tenancy is defined by the rise survivorship. When B dies, 
it then goes to C. C now has B share. D gets nothing. No. D gets nothing. Oh, I mean, I said D. No, 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 no. I'm saying D. D, this person right here, right? A conveyed to D. D gets nothing. D gets nothing after the death. But he still has his. Yeah, yeah, no. D gets nothing after the death. Yeah. D, D gets nothing after B's death, right? Yes, yes. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, D still has a share. I'm sorry. D doesn't lose anything. There you go. D doesn't lose it. Because D still has more than anything. Yes. 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 H gets nothing. Let me let me go through this one more time. I swear, I this is this this problem's always so deceiving. That's why you get so much time for it. H gets nothing. So let, let, let's just start this from the beginning, okay? Start from square one. Okay? So we have A, B, and C as joint tenants, right? Let's just start start here. A, B, and C as joint tenants. Uh, uh, Nick, A dies, right? What happens? Yes. So A dies. B and C will get, will, will share A's interest. And we would now say that B and C are joint tenants. They're still joint tenants, right? Everyone with me so far? So I know I was tripping up before with the fee simple. You can have an undivided share in fee simple. It's kind of a weird concept. But they take whatever interest B have and they, and they now share it. So now there are only two joint tenants instead of three. Okay, everyone get that example. Everyone with me? Okay, let, let's try this. Let's try a new example. So A, B, and C are joint tenants, and this is the question that we have here. A sells uh, his interest to D. Oops. Okay, A sells his interest to D. This is the exact question we have now. All right, so Levy, does does this transaction, A selling his interest to D, at all affect B and C? That's right. This has no effect on the relationship between B and C. Okay. The only relationships that A can impact are those that he is belonging to. That is relationship between A and B and A and C. A can only mess up what he's connected to, right? A can't mess up stuff he's not connected to. So we say that B and C between each other are still joint tenants. But now, if you want to describe relationship between A and B, I'm sorry, between D and B, they're tenants in common. And between D and C, they're also tenants in common. In the same property on Blackacre, you can have neighbors who have different relationships with each other. B and C can be joint tenants, right? But but A and B, I'm sorry, but, but D and B are tenants in common. And then D and C are also tenants in common. It, it's a weird counterintuitive thought that the same piece of land, with the same people living, with the same access to everything, but they have different relationships. And where this matters is when someone dies. That's where it matters. So again, let's let's use this example. B dies and test it. Okay, so Nicole, when B dies without a will, what happens? That's right. C gets B's share under the uh, right of survivorship. C gets B's share under the right of survivorship.
Tabitha, does, does D get anything new? Does D, does D get anything as a result of B's death? Right. D gets nothing new. Because as tenant in common, there's no survivorship. Everyone see that? Yes, ma'am. It goes to his heirs. His heirs take it. Yep. That, 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 that's, a, <laughs> that's Raymond's problem, right? Yeah. Yes, sir, in the back. I don't like thinking about it because it's not actually part of the land. If you want to put numbers on it, you're correct, but I don't like putting numbers on it because it's not the case that there's a physical two-thirds portion of land. Like there's 308 acres. It's not that these 100 acres are for this person, these two are for this person. It's not accurate. If you want to call it that, yes, that makes it easier, but I don't like using those phrases. All right, everyone, sh questions? As I saw a couple other hands. Yeah. What book? Yeah, the textbook? Yeah. yeah. On 320, uh, I guess the last sentence of the... 320, you said? Uh -huh. uh, the last Above the, the last paragraph, uh, it says, indeed, any one joint tenant converted to joint tenancy interest in common unilaterally by conveying his interest to a third party. Is this supporting what you're saying? Because I, I guess when I read it, I didn't... I, okay, I let, me, let me read that. Indeed, any one joint tenant converted to joint tenancy interest in common unilaterally by conveying his interest to a third party, this severs joint tenancy interest to a third party. So the key word is as between. Right. I guess I didn't the, the, yeah. because I'm thinking A breaks up any part of the portion. Then no. And, and that's, the, that's the trickiest part of this case. The key word is as between. Right. Okay. So if we go back to here, we have to think of relationships between people, right? Mm -hmm. So we have the relationship between, to start, right? We have A, B, mm -hmm. A, C, and B, C. There are three relationships, right? There are three. So when that, that page just had me read here, I'll, I'll go back to it. Uh, it says as between, right? Was it actually severing? It's severing this one, and it's severing this one. Two of the three are severed. The third remains. Does that make sense? You can't, but there, there is, But when you have three people, they're individuals. It, it's helpful to think about that when there are two people, right? Two people. But when you have three people, you have three separate relationships. And it's very possible, indeed likely, in these plots of land, we can have three people. Imagine this, right? On a huge piece of land, you have two people married or tenancy by the entirety. You have another two people who are uh, joint tenants with them. And you have this third guy who's a tenant in common. That's possible. These medieval people are messed up. They, 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 were, they, they were crazy, right? But they did this stuff to torture you, so they have to learn it. And this is actually still pretty common. Um, does anyone here know if their parents own property as joint tenants? Um, I'm guessing, yeah. Uh, we'll do marital property like in three weeks. We'll talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, my, my parents will be here in about 15 minutes. They, uh, let's see, I'm guessing she texted me to say she's on her way. Or that she got lost. No oh, God, she must have lost no text. Um, most married couples take their property as joint tenancy. They don't. You, you do? Yeah. Did you even think anything of it when you did that or not? <laughs> oh, so how, how did you have that even happen? That you that? They didn't even ask you? So, so, so you can do what Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Riddle did and, uh, you know, convince them like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's take yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that's that's the time and title, right? The title has to say the A, B, and C is joint tenants. It has to say that in clear language. Otherwise, of course, we'll construe it as a um, uh, as, as a tenancy common. 
Yes, sir. It seems to me that this type of fiction, every time someone splits the property, uh, I mean, their interests, all the other people are going to lose something. Yeah. It seems like yeah. any one person decides to defect from the deal. Screws everyone over. Yeah. I mean, it's not much different here. If you have a husband and wife who are on the land, and one of the wives conveys to such a third person, she just screwed her husband over. Whenever you have these joint properties, whether it's a tenancy con or a joint tenancy, there is the potential to screw the other person over. It's kind of a collective action problem, right? When you have two people living on land, it's very likely for one person to get the other person in trouble. If you have roommates, you know how that works. All right, other questions? Yes, sir. Like, let's say you own a plot of land like here in Houston, downtown, mm -hmm. and you know, say you have a joint tenancy with somebody, but if you convey your your uh, tenancy or the tenancy in common to three or four other individuals, if that one, <laughs> the original joint tenancy, uh, wanted to purchase those interests, what would that go for? Everyone here, like, in the with the interest in the land. Okay, so uh, uh, let me take your example, and I'll make it a little bit easier. So you have two joint, two tenants in common, they each have fifty-fifty share, right? Yeah, more or less. You sell your share to two people, right? Mm -hmm. In theory, they each have a quarter. The market value. Now, I'm saying here downtown. Oh, I have no idea. Are you? I don't know. That I have no idea. Are you? Are you asking? Because we're not. I'm not asking like the price of land. I'm asking what the interest. Like what? What would market say? You would take a quarter of the fair market value. No, that would be a quarter. Yeah, I mean that's how you do it. I don't. I don't know numbers. Um, I mean, it's possible they might charge you more than that because. Yeah. I actually, in, in, in truth, it probably would be less because now you'd have to have a neighbor. Because the market value would be less because now you have this neighbor to deal with. Okay, other questions? Is that a hand up or a scratch? Yes. Yes, sir. Yep. Who's next? No, 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 no. Nothing goes to D because he's not a joint tenant. The only way that a tenant will get something is if he's joint. If, if you have two tenants in common, right, and one dies, the other one gets zero, goes to the, to the decedent's heirs. Here, all of B's interests go to C, his joint tenant. B will give nothing to D. Get that? Yes. Yes. Now, if now I'll, I'll I'll take your question up. What happens now if D dies? What happens to D's interests? B, B's already dead. Yeah. Uh, so whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Ready? At this point, right? You have D. You have C and D living on the land, right? What's the relationship between C and D at this point? What were they before? It's it's, it's the same as before. It, that's right. The tenants in common. D dies. What happens? No, but this is this is twenty minutes ago. This is nothing new. When you have two tenants in common, one dies. What happens to the land? What happens? What happens to D share? So what happens to D share? Yes, that's it. D's uh, interest goes to D's heirs. Does C take anything here? Does, does C take anything here? Yep, C takes nothing. That's right. That, that's it. You're done. That, that's exactly right. As tenants in common, this is what we did before. When D dies, D's interests goes to his heirs. C gets nothing. <laughs> yeah, they get new, <laughs> they get new crappy neighbors to bother them. That's all they get. Yeah, C <laughs> C gets new neighbors. Yeah, she lost her husband. Now she lose. She gets these new crappy neighbors. Yes, sir. H got zero. H got nothing. Even though the will might have left him something, this this trumps it. 
this actually often happens where a person might leave property in their will to an heir, but the land is a joint tenancy, so it goes to the, goes to the surviving uh, partner. Okay, let's do question number two, please, okay? Uh, we're, any more questions on this one? Can you... I don't think you can. One second, I think I have this. I don't think you can do a, a partition for a. Uh, no. Uh, um, I. If both husband and wife agree to partition, you can, but a single spouse can't partition it. I think that's the rule. Anyway, what does a fox say? <laughs> Everyone, everyone see that video? I, I hope it's still relevant when I teach first to be post next year, but I don't know if it will be. What, what does the fox say? Google it after class. All right, question two. Um, uh, Andrew, can you please read question number two, please? Okay, thank you. So we have O conveys black ear to husband, wife, and ex as joint tenants. Some weird menage a trois. I don't even know what that, that is, but... Um, so, O conveys black acre to HW and X as joint tenants with the right of survivorship. Okay, so H and husband and wife are married, X in relation. Okay, so the husband dies, right? Okay, so, uh, Angela, let's walk through this one step at a time. When the husband dies, what happens then? Just, just when the husband dies. No, 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 no. They're just joint tenants. How would you describe the relation between between the wife and ex? You're, you're right. I know the terminology is annoying. How would you describe the relation between the wife and ex? That's right. So the wife and ex are now joint tenants. Everyone see that? Okay. So now uh, the wife dies, right? Okay. Uh, Lee, what happens after the wife dies? Yeah, so now X has in fee simple. Okay? I'll probably should do this example first, but it, it's pretty straightforward. Everyone see that? that that's, that's straightforward. So at that point, X will have had y, uh, the husband shares, X will have the wife shares, and he gets fee simple. Okay? No questions on this one? All right, let's do question three, please. Um, actually, Adam, can you read question three, please? <laughs> okay. I thought you, you probably didn't want to hear the word remainder today, but unfortunately it's here. Uh, okay, so, so Adam, when we talk about life estates, you know, last week, we always hit the A for life, right? And what was a life by which we measured the life estate? Obvious. Yeah, A's life. So th this, is, this is different, right? It says to A and B as joint tenants for joint lives. So here, which life do you think we used to measure? Is it, is it, is it T's? No, not T's. Because look, it says their, right? It says their joint lives. Yeah, but which one? Yes. Whoever lives the longest, right? So the last survivor. And, and that has to be, right? Because to their survivor, whoever dies, you know, last, right? If A and B are alive, if A dies, does B have any survivors? No. B can only have survivors when he dies. So it's the last survivor. So let's say A dies, right? B's so alive, he has no survivors. Or if B dies before A, right? B dies before A, A, you know, A has no survivors. So it's actually interesting here. 
is that the, that the life estate is actually measured by whoever dies last. So if A dies first, okay, what happens? Okay, but here's where it gets interesting. Here's actually where it gets interesting. Uh, <laughs> so here's where remainders actually becomes tricky. Uh, let, let's go. Let's go to that corner. So Santos. So if I said I, I gave I gave this example right to A for for life, uh, then to B, right? What interest does B have when A dies? When A dies, what does B have? Right, B would have a fee simple. Right? Okay, so let's go back up to here. Oh, Santos, by the way, so what, what's what, what would B's interest be called? How would we classify B's interest? It's, it's a fee simple, but... but Yes, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be yeah, a remainder and fee simple, right? It'd be a remainder and fee simple. Everyone see that? Okay. Now check this out. What's... Yeah, no, Ian, you're up. <laughs> Ian. <laughs> What's the present interest here in, in this grant? What's the present interest in this grant? For whom? And what do we call that? Okay, so <laughs> it's a joint tenancy life estate for A and B. Right? Everyone see that? Okay, so now, uh, now so uh, Sophia, what's the future interest here? Ooh, right? This one's tricky. What's the future interest? Good. In whom? Who's named? Ah, but but the survivor of what though? Yes, it's a contingent remainder in the survivor. Whoever lives longer gets it in fee simple. I know, right? Whoever lives longer gets it in fee simple. This is actually called a tongue ting if you ever watch Simpsons. Um, to A and B, we the flying hellfish. To A and B as joint tenants for their lives. Right? Okay. Then one of them dies. A dies. Who's the survivor? B. B now gets it fee simple. I'll say that another way. While both of them are alive, they share it as a life estate. But once A dies, B's remainder kicks in. He has a contingent remainder in fee simple. And then B gets it outright. Oh, uh, the car crash. The plane crash, right? Okay. To who? Yes. That was my next question, but you're right. If, for whatever freak reason, A and B are, you know, in a, in a horrific car crash, right? And they, they have both time of death is the same, same second, which will never happen, but assuming it was, T would actually have a reversion. This is why you can't forget the future interest stuff, because it actually makes a difference here also. <coughs> So they have, A and B have a joint say A dies, B doesn't just have it in, in life estate? No. Yeah. So say A dies, right? B gets it in fee simple. Even though it's conveyed as a life estate to both of them. Yeah. But you can convey someone to have a, a joint life estate. The, the key word here is for their joint lives, right? Once their joint lives end, you go past the comma. 
once the joint live ends, the remainder kicks in. And the joint lives are ends when one of them dies. When one of them dies, the joint lives are over, we go to the remainder, the remainder kicks in, it becomes fee simple. Yes. T whatever reversion. Yeah. Everyone always everyone always asks about the dying at the same time. Yes. Um, if A or B sold their interest, it would strip it from being a joint tenancy, and it will become a, 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 a tenancy in common. Okay. So the only difference here is that. Is yeah, but but what's weird, I mean, to use your example, had they converted to a life estate, right? Um, once one of them died, I think it would still go to the other one anyway. So the person who bought it would be out of luck. Is it because it was one of their joint lines and it reversed? Yes. Because if it was just an outright, well, just outright ownership, it would right. not have it. The only way to give a life estate to two people is for joint lives. Otherwise, we wouldn't call it life estate. I mean, you 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 could you could do this. You could say um, to uh, A and B jointly for the life of A, then to the then to B, right? You could do that. So that means A and B can live together so long as A is alive, and then once A dies, it goes to B and be simple. Mm hmm. Talking about joint, joint tenant, tenant to die and come a disaster. Right. Um, Tell you what. Apply to this, though. No. So, no. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about the disaster and people dying. I mean, well. Uh, it, it, it's possible. I mean, uh, it is feasible. Okay. Let's do the um the the, the, the um. What do you call it? The uh the, the last case, the riddle case, fairly quickly. Uh, Again, when you see a case from California, that means you're about to reject the common law rule. Uh, I think I said this in the last class. We'll have like a couple more of these. <laughs> There's ever a case from California to reject a common law rule. So at common law, it was actually required to, if, if one person in a joint tenancy wanted to uh, sever the tenancy, they have to transfer to a straw man and then give it back, right? All the court here says that makes no sense. It's a waste of time. Let's just let the person transfer right away, and they can either create or sever the interests. That's, there's not much more there you need. Um, of course, this frustrates lawyers because if you marry someone and you think you have it set and they would need to have a straw man to do this, but they can do it by themselves, it makes it a lot, it makes it harder to track because there's no third party to know about it. Yep. Questions? George. That would not be contingent. That'd be vested. It says to be. This one. A can be jointly fried than, than to be. Yeah, here we say that the present interest would be A and B, a joint life estate, joint life, and then the future would be that B has a vested remainder in fee simple. All right? Yes, sir. Uh, not now. Don't worry about that now. All right, I want to bring one thing to your attention. Um, I want to schedule a final exam review, but I want to find a good date for everyone. So on the class notes, say there's a link to the review section, and there's a little thing called Doodle, and it's kind of cool. And what I want you to do is to select, well, some of you have already done it, select all the days that work for you for a final re exam review session. This is going to be like a three-hour block, and the way it works is this. For the first 90 minutes, I, I actually proctor one of my questions from last year. I'll proctor it. I'll sit here in the exam. I'll, I'll hold time the same way you would an exam. The second 90 minutes, we'll, keep, we'll have a break. I'm going to go over it with you in extreme detail. I'll give you the A plus A answer from last year. Okay? This is very beneficial. So you have basically two options, before Thanksgiving or after. Um, and, and it's up to you. Note that the exam is actually the, the 2nd of December. So I used to do this the last day of class, and I found this was a waste of time because no one studied yet. So if I do it now, hopefully you'll actually study for the exam. Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume for you guys it's during the day at some point. If you want to make it at night, we can, but I'm going to start with days. It gets too complicated with it. Okay, then that's what I thought. For, for, for day students, like during the day, for you students, I'll say at night. So at some point during the class day, whatever it is, 9 to 5.
All right, any other questions? All right, please fill this out for the next class, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Hello. Is there a way to get your notes online? Can I access the Well, I, these are always available. They're linked in every class. I just never knew where to get them. Yeah, I mean, in every class, these as the lecture notes. Oh, okay. They're always linked in every okay. class. Great. Hello. So the only difference in the uh,